The third reason to join the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster today is we do not use scare tactics. A lot of these religions, handed down from the Bronze Age, have this very old and ancient and uh, some say evil idea that uh, after you die there is a lake of fire p prepared for you and that if you have been anything except for perfect during your time here on earth, that lake of fire is what you deserve. And that is of course nonsense because who would condemn any other to a lake of eternal fire for anything whatsoever? Like, geez, even murder, like lake of eternal fire, I'm sure he'll say sorry before eternity's over. So yeah, we don't have this false idea of hell that we're trying to scare you into joining over. We don't have you uh, freaking out about your kids. I don't know what about my kids. I hope they didn't go to hell. Well, they're not going to hell. There's no such place. Uh, the Flying Spaghetti Monsters proved it. And so, uh, yeah, no fear tactics. So that's very nice. You get to uh, make your decisions instead of motivated by fear, motivated by your reasonable and rational mind. So that's nice. Like I said, I've been a member of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster for about a year. I know that may seem like I'm inexperienced, but I have been through all the classes and training so that I can help you in your journey toward the Flying Spaghetti Monster today. I can help you become baptized into that religion uh, as soon as you like. We don't even have to get you wet and we don't even have to uh, have you condemn your family or anything like that. Hello, how are you doing? You're confusing. Oh, I don't mean to be confusing. Yeah, you uh, well, if you have any clarifying questions you'd like to ask, I'd be happy to answer them. I don't mean to be confusing, that is why I bring myself out here into the public space so that I can answer any questions that they still may be out there, that the anti-pastors may have put into the zeitgeist about what pastafarians are and what pastafarians aren't, who the flying spaghetti monster is and what he wants for us in our everyday lives why Jesus Christ is the Antichrist and where we go from there. So if you do have any questions, step right up and I'll be able to uh, answer those uh, at your leisure. <clears throat> the eighth reason to join the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster today is that uh, we do not assign homework. There are a lot of religions out there with a very large and dated pile of scripture that they would have you please take home and memorize, even if it includes very dark and amoral stories like God telling someone to kill his kids. That's very crazy. I'm not sure what God would ask his kids to do that. So uh, if your God has got a bunch of scripture that makes no sense whatsoever, then you can move over to our scripture, which you don't have to memorize, and you can just throw out at your leisure because we know it's nonsense. We're the ones who wrote it. We know that it's nonsense, and so you don't have to memorize it. That would be crazy to memorize a book of nonsense in support of an amoral God. We don't ask you to do it. <clears throat> Number nine, we do have that first god that has been proved scientifically. A lot of the gods of the Bronze Age and the Iron Age are afraid of science because it measures just how tiny their bowls are. But our god, the Flying Spaghetti Monster, has such large and meaty bowls that he's not afraid of people measuring them. He is or he is uh, very proud of the size of them, and uh, you are free to uh, use science to measure him at your own leisure. Not at all. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry for invading your evening. <clears throat> Number 10, my God has more love than some of the Bronze Age gods in vogue today. My God has no prescriptions of hatred towards your homosexual brethren. It has no prescriptions of hatred towards any of people of a certain race or gender or religion or creed. And, uh, and in that way, my God allows all of his children to love all the rest of his children. Instead of prescribing hate and genocide in the name of love like the Old Testament God did. My God has 50% more love. Number 11, no kids. 
There's a lot of religions today that invite the kids in at their very youngest age and then they're all just sitting around making noise and talking during the meetings while you're trying to listen, asking for them Cheerios and just drawing on everything. And we don't really want that. So we made the rule, no kids, because, I mean, you can't really discern the truthfulness about God and deity when you're a child anyway. So we're not really sure what the kids are doing there in the first place. It takes an adult mind to understand who God is and what he wants from you. And we're not sure why indoctrinating kids is legal in the first place. <clears throat> Do you step right up? Like I said, I am a uh, preacher from the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, Pastafarian Ministeroni. You may have heard about us on the internet and um, in the newspapers and things like this. There is a lot of misinformation about the, out there about us and what we believe and what we don't believe. So we like to go out every once in a while into the public space, just like the uh, prophets and street screechers of old, and uh, preach the good news that Jesus Christ died centuries ago and you don't have to listen to him anymore. I have the way out of the addiction from the blood cult of Jesus Christ. <coughs> do you step right up if uh, you do have any questions about the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. I use to bite my tongue and hold my breath. Scared to rock the boat and make a mess. So I sat quietly, agreed politely. I guess that I forgot I had a choice. I let you push me past the breaking point. I stood for nothing and so I fell for everything. You held me down, but I got up, already brushing off the dust. You hear my voice, you hear that sound, like thunder, I'm going to shake the ground. You held me down, but I got up. Get ready, because I've had enough. I see it all, I see it now. I have the eye of the tiger, a fighter, dancing through the fire, because I am a champion and you're going to hear me roar, louder, louder than a lion, because I am a champion and you are going to hear me roar. Katy Perry, the great American prophet, Katy Perry. I think you can feel it inside you right now. Flying Spaghetti Monster touching you with his nudely appendage, telling you the truth of my hymn. If you do have any questions about the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, do step right up. I am an ordained minister only. I am able to answer any questions you may have. I can also perform any ordinances you may need, any minor miracles you might need in your life, any placebos or snake oils you may be requiring. I can help you with those as well. I've travelled quite a bit and I have selected the best ingredients for placebo from around the world, including the Middle East and uh, Oceania. <clears throat> so I do come out here quite often to, ch to preach about the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, to preach about pastafarianism and help people on their journey towards it. And a lot of people come up to me and ask me, Oh, Schizophrenia Mitch, I hear you preaching against uh, the Christ and against the Bible quite uh, loudly and fervently, but surely you're joking about that. Surely you do not believe that Jesus Christ was a fictitious character and the Bible was a very bad book to hang your morality on. No, 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 I do actually do believe that. I do believe that the Bible is a terrible book to base your morality on. And I can prove it to you if you have four hours. It only takes four hours to do. I can remove the uh, Christ of the New Testament out of your meat brain so that you don't have to swear fealty to him anymore. But, let's start just by criticizing the Bible a little bit so you can see that I'm not totally out of my head. That I do actually have a reason for hating the Bible. It's not just crazy people. Hey dude, how you doing? <laughs> it's not just crazy people who hate the Bible. It is sane people who hate it as well because Jesus Christ was a liar and he was a wanker and he told you that you have to be perfect even though that thing is literally impossible. 
Flying Spaghetti Monster does not need you to be perfect. He needs you instead to be human, just like he created you. But uh, the God of the New Testament wants you to be something other than human, so I'm not really sure why he created you that way. But anyway, let's just say, what's wrong with the Bible? Let's just start on the list. First of all, money's nice. I don't know if you heard what Jesus Christ said about money, but he condemned it in the harshest terms. He said that you can have not two thoughts in your head at the same time. You must either be serving the God Mammon or you will be serving uh, something else. You can't serve two masters. He said in the harshest terms, do not screw around with that capitalism. Do not screw around with that money. Of course, we didn't listen because look at what we did with our capitalism. Look at the nice things we've been able to do with money. Like, for example, well, we cured polio. That was pretty nice. Took a lot of money to do. We've made uh, lots of uh, strides and medical advances uh, with the money that it takes. So money's nice. Not sure why I condemned it so much. The Bible does hate money. Secondly, the golden rule sucks. To call it the golden rule makes it seem like it's uncriticizable. Well, it's totally criticizable. It's very easy to find faults with the golden rule. If you don't think so, let's just do it real quick. The golden rule is um, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Well, that works if and only if that other person wants exactly what you want. And how often is that the case when you're dealing with another human? Exactly none of the time. So what we should do instead of the golden rule, instead of treating other people the way we would want to be treated if they were exactly like us, what we should do instead is listen to those other people and ask them how they would like to be treated and then treat them more like that. And there, quite easily, I have thrown the golden rule into the trash bin and come up with something even better. And that is the strength of iteration. And that is why we are born generation to generation, so that we can take the foolish ideas of our forefathers and throw them in the rubbish bin where they belong. Things like Revelation, the God of Abraham, and uh, all of these really dark and Bronze Age ideas, the blood cult of Jesus Christ, we can just throw them all away.